The hypnotic eye is upon you. I've been making art, crafts, and music most of my life, but I've never been able to stick to just one thing. I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. And you know what? That's okay. I follow my interests wherever they take me. My name is Shane, and this is Dark Photon Studio. Greetings, humans of the planet Earth. I was watching a Mariah Elizabeth video, and she was customizing a squishy, as she does, and it was an alpaca. This one. Mariah primed it, and the area where the face goes was blank. The little creative gears in my head started spinning, and I thought that the space looked perfect for a giant eyeball. Then I thought, what if the alpaca was black? And had longer legs? As well as cat or bat ears? As you've probably gathered by now, that inspired me to make the sketch. It doesn't look much like an alpaca anymore. It's a cycloptocapaca bat. That's kind of a mouthful, so I'll just call him Devin. I briefly considered making a plushie, and I've made them in the past, but I'm not that great at sewing. Also, I'd have to order fur fabric, create a pattern, etc. I wanted to make another paper mache thingy. Uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to do the furry part yet, but I pushed on with the paper craft part anyway. First, I outlined the sketch of Devin and printed it out at roughly the size of the sculpture I planned on making. Next, I fished some empty paper towel rolls out of the recycling bin. Then I cut the roll in half and stuffed one in with a ball of aluminum foil, shoved in some newsprint to give it a bit more structural strength, then capped the other end with another aluminum ball and wrapped it with masking tape to hold it together. I cut out a half circle from the other half of the paper towel tube and cut it to the rough height of Devin's neck and head. Then I stuffed it with more newsprint paper, trimmed it to a taper, and stuffed another aluminum ball in the end and taped it up with more masking tape. Using another used paper towel tube, I cut two half circles to fit it to the rear end and made two cuts so I could curl the two halves into legs. It was getting a bit too floppy at the base of the legs, so I added a ring I had trimmed off to add a bit more rigidity. Then, you guessed it, more tape and foil. For the front, second verse, same as the first, and yet more tape. To bulk up the torso, I added a layer of crumpled aluminum foil and even more tape. For the ears, I rolled up little cones of towel roll cutoffs and attached them with, of course, tape. Masking tape isn't supposed to stick very well or for very long, and is especially non-sticky in warm and or damp weather, like Scotland in the summer, so I used hot glue to tack down as many loose ends as I could find. Before applying the paper mache, I brushed on a layer of Mod Podge to make extra sure none of the tape would come loose when painted. Using more Mod Podge straight from the bottle, I covered Devin in a layer of newsprint. This gave me a nice, hard, and somewhat smoothish surface. Then I painted it black with some old, clumpy paint left over from the Voivod diorama. Now that I had it all painted, I planned on covering it all up. And this is where I hit my first stumbling block. Originally, I planned on using strips of craft foam uh, cut into little triangles and then wrapped around. Um, but as I worked on it, the less I liked it and it was starting to look bulky and it was going to take a ton of hot glue to hold on. And I thought it looked just kind of crap. Then I had a flash of inspiration. I could use black felt, but I didn't have any. Uh, so one Amazon order and a day later, I had more black felt than I could possibly use and a small bottle of tacky glue. Even though I wasn't making a plushie, I still had to make a pattern so the felt would fit properly. I'd seen this done by cosplayers and doll customizers, so I figured I could muddle through it. I wrapped Devin in more masking tape, then drew on lines where I thought it made sense. It was then I remembered that people that know what they're doing usually do this with plastic wrap, which is then covered in duct tape. 
Despite a few accidental cuts into the paper mache, it peeled off okay. I slapped the tape patterns onto some newsprint so the layers wouldn't separate, as it seemed prone to do. Using a silver sharpie, I transferred the patterns to the felt and proceeded to cut them out. The pattern wasn't perfect, so I had to do some trimming here and there as I went along. This is my first time using so-called tacky glue, and I wasn't too impressed. I didn't find it to be all that tacky. I'm not sure what makes this better for fabric and felt than regular white PVA glue or Mod Podge. However, it worked okay as long as I didn't try to reposition the felt. Before finishing the head and neck, I painted on the giant single eye, as I figured it would be easier and I'd have less chance of getting paint on the felt. I completed the eye by adding a layer of gloss varnish. You know what? It looks like he's wearing a sweater. After adding the final piece of felt, it wasn't quite complete. I blended the edges together by scraping an X-Acto blade back and forth across the seam. I had trimmed the edges very close because I thought that would make blending the seam easier, but I discovered where one piece overlapped another slightly, it was much more effortless to get a nice invisible join. The surface was still looking a bit flat, so using the knife and a wire brush, I raised the nap so it appeared a bit more fluffy. There's not as much floof as the original sketch, but I'm quite happy with the final result. So here is the final result. I know this was a short and simple one this time, but I needed something less complex after the Voivod build. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me make um, Devin the Cyclopto Capacabat, and thank you for watching.